Olivia Wells is a medical student, and we'll get on to back to calls in a moment. She's a medical student at Monash University. She's been a very successful swimmer, and she is now Miss Universe Australia 2013. Olivia, good morning. Good morning, Neil. How far do you swim? Uh, when I swam, I used to train in training. I would swim maybe five or six kilometres once or twice a day, depending on the day. And so, at what level were you swimming? State level? Um, state level and age national. So I was never going to be an Olympian, but certainly have a few medals in my closet. What distance? Uh, mainly 100 and 200 breaststroke. Feet like Ian Thorpe? <laughs> they are quite long, but also quite narrow. Okay, so you're an elite swimmer, a medical student. You don't get into medicine without a fair old uh, uh, inter score. What'd you do? Uh, my ATAR score is for me to know, oh. and only me, but I assure you it didn't define me, and it was enough to get me into medicine, and that's all that mattered. Why, why medicine? Why do you want to do medicine? I've just always wanted to do medicine. It's it's, I don't have anyone it, doctor in the family, but it's always appealed to me in terms of the mental stimulation, but also working with people. I love working with people, talking to people, caring for people. So it seemed like the perfect marriage of those two aspects of my personality. So you, you were swim, swimming because you liked it, medicine because you liked it. Why Miss Universe? Uh, it started off as just a bit of a, a fun thing to do. I mean, I'm a girl, I, I did like dressing up and I'm, I'm not afraid to say that I enjoy feeling pretty, especially after some years as a young teenager where I didn't feel like I was very pretty and I, and I didn't feel like I was one of the cool kids. And so what started off as just a bit of fun and a bit of a laugh and, and enjoying dressing up and feeling good about myself, and I'm sitting here now. Why didn't you feel like one of the cool kids? Elite, um, elite swimmer, <laughs> smart obviously, and uh, well, I think we all, yeah, I think we all go through periods in our life where we feel like uh, we're not accepted for who we are, and I think that's very common, especially for teenage girls. And I, I did feel like because I was good at maths and good at science as, as a young girl, and, and I enjoyed school, that I, I was a little bit left out. But you know, it did come full circle, and, and by the time you finished high school, um, everyone was such good friends, and it's just one of those growing up things. Did you get bullied? I wouldn't say bullied. There were certainly words that hurt me, but I don't believe the girls said that with any intention of hurting me. It's just one of those things, and I'm sure it happens to everyone. Like words like nerd, I suppose. Nerd, and, and freak was one that was bandied about. Freak? And Why were you a freak? Because you're good at math. Well, I agree with that. <laughs> freak at swimming, freak at maths. You know, it's it wasn't intended with any hurt, but sometimes it, it, it did make me feel a little bit left out and, and a bit different. And to a 13 or 14 year old different isn't always good, whereas now I embrace that difference. So how did you respond to it at the time? Uh, I kept going on with how I went to, about my daily life. It was, it wasn't something that I gave much credence to. And while you know it, it wasn't great to not have, I, I mean, I did have a great circle of friends at school that was so supportive, and and I love them, and I still love them. But um, it, yeah, it's just a matter of not letting letting people get to you. Did you go to school in Melbourne? What school? I went to Loretto in okay. in, in Turak, and it's it's a wonderful school, and yeah. they've put me on such a great path for life. You'd have to say uh, with your record that if there's ever a type A personality it's you, what does that mean? Uh, I don't think we should type personalities. I don't think people can fall into boxes as easily as Gee, that. You'll change what you qualify in medicine. That's all you do <laughs> is put people in boxes. Hopefully not. Um, you know, my grandfathers especially have instilled in me that people don't belong in boxes and that um, it, it doesn't matter what you do with your life whether your level of education, your intelligence, your race, background, wealth, we're all the same ultimately and we all deserve um, equal respect. Why particularly your grandfathers have done that? Um, it's certainly been instilled in, in all of my family but uh, both my grandfathers came from very average middle class backgrounds and they've always instilled in me, um, or they passed away a couple of years ago unfortunately, but I'm really appreciative for the, for the background they've given me that I, I don't forget that I've had a privileged upbringing and they didn't. And it's one thing that we're not all fortunate enough to have. You've just been in Tonga volunteering over there. What were you doing there? Um, I was one of four medical students from Team Med, which is a Monash charity that went over to the island of Vava'u, which is one of the northern islands, to work in a hospital over there. So part of the trip was just doing day-to-day -day hospital uh, rounds, business, and part of the trip was actually um, doing diabetes screening for, for locals. Diabetes is a massive issue in Tonga. Um, approximately 90% of the population are overweight or obese, which puts them at a huge hey, risk. If you're the type A, pers type a personality, 
90% of the population is overweight. <laughs> yes. You can be scientific, you've got to speak English too. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, it's, it's certainly an interesting, an interesting kind of experience going over there, coming from, from a world where, you know, we do judge size and over there it's so different and everyone, you yeah. know, it, it's a really different experience. I don't want to risk getting too political, but uh, given you've been in that region, what's your view on the refugee situation? I knew you would ask that. <laughs> I knew you um, knew. <laughs> I'm actually, I, I do believe that we have an obligation a, as a developed nation um, to accommodate asylum seekers. And I do believe that, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a fundamental human right to be able to seek asylum. And I don't think people would be risking their lives, giving up everything they had to jump on a boat and, and try and come to Australia if they weren't desperate.